scientific literacy has nothing to do with science at all. It has nothing to do with how much we know about gravity or the mitochondria. And it absolutely has nothing to do with whether we can do a chemistry experiment in the lab. But our time in school has taught us that science is about being able to do and know the facts and being able to do chemistry experiments in the lab. And that's what scientific literacy appeared to be. But we know that scientific literacy is actually about our ability to understand the world around us and our ability to make decisions based on that, make decisions about what to do and about what to believe. But in reality, we don't know that much about the world around us. And so, knowing facts about things that we already know and doing experiments about, about things that have already been experimented on are simply not that helpful to navigate the unknown. In order to navigate the unknown, we need to first ask a question, a question that nobody has the answer to. These questions can be grand, things like how do we feed a growing world population, or questions as seemingly simple as whether or not we buy GMO foods for dinner. Regardless of what the question is, we always start in the same place. We need to collect the information that other people have. That's what we like to call knowledge consumption. And that's important. It's important to be able to consume knowledge, but at the same time, knowledge consumption isn't enough. Because sometimes the answers to the questions that we ask simply don't exist. And so in those scenarios, we have to be able to ask new questions and think in new ways to answer our, our questions about the world around us. And so in those cases, we call that knowledge generation. Now, both knowledge consumption and knowledge generation are very important to navigate an uncertain world. And together, they're actually the essence of science. That's the scientific process. For us, the scientific process is iteratively asking questions, collecting information, and experimenting to come up with something new. And for us to be scientifically literate, you need to be able to apply the scientific process to the unknown. Now, school does an OK job of teaching us how to consume knowledge. In fact, that's what tests and that's what experiments are. But when we leave school, we often are unable to generate knowledge for ourselves. In fact, many of us don't believe that we can generate knowledge at all. And why is that a problem? It's a problem because in order to make decisions about what to do or what to believe, we have to be able to generate knowledge of our own. It isn't sufficient to simply consume knowledge in a world that's increasingly filled with misinformation, we have to do more than just consume other people's opinions. We have to be able to process all the information out there, evaluate the evidence, and come to a conclusion of our own. A lot of us just take things at face value. And at the same time, in an increasingly complex world, we have to do more than just do what other people do. The reality is, is that we have to be able to evaluate our options, we have to be able to evaluate that in the context of our own values, and ultimately come to a decision. A lot of us just do what our friends do. And in both of those scenarios, what we don't realize is that in order to make a decision about what to do or what to believe, we have to be able to generate knowledge of our own. And so in doing that, we are practicing the scientific process. And so when we practice the scientific process, not only are we insulated from misinformation and from misguided decisions, but we actually start to think of the world in a completely new way. We become more open-minded, open to the perspectives and the ideas of other people. We begin seeking ways to disprove our own beliefs and seeking ways to improve our own communities. And most important of all, we become more courageous. We're willing to try it, even though we might fail. And so even though knowledge generation is so very important, our education systems don't do a great job of building that and cultivating that in our students. Our education systems are built to teach and test facts. Questions like, how many moons does Jupiter have? And our education systems may also do labs and projects, but really, that's just a demonstration. It's not an investigation. We're tested on whether we can follow a recipe to get to an already known answer. The reality is our education systems don't prepare students to answer and ask questions of their own. Now, we believe in an education system that empowers students to use the scientific process and apply it to the world unknown. But how do we reimagine a scientific education system that does just that, 
that goes that step further, that teaches students not only facts and the processes involved in those facts, but also how to apply them to the unknown. Well, how do we reimagine scientific literacy? Well, over the past few years, Sunand and I have been working with an amazing team of educators, students, and researchers to come up with an answer to that very question through a nonprofit organization called Eureka. Now, our model is built on the idea that students can generate knowledge, and that in doing so, they actually become more informed about their world and are able to practice uh, their skills within it. Now, over the past year, Sunand and I have been working with hundreds of students across Canada to come up with solutions and questions to the COVID-19 pandemic. Those students, just like Sarah and David. In the, in the course of the COVID-19 pandemic, Sarah was curious about whether the pandemic was affecting crime rates in her neighborhood. And David wondered whether the pandemic was affecting local businesses. And just like Sarah and David, a lot of us have questions about things that simply don't have answers yet. And those questions are things that we actually really support at Eureka. We try to get our students to engage with those questions and get their hands dirty. And the questions that we ask are first, novel. No one has asked them before. But number two, they're relevant to our students' lives. That's to say that students actually care about these questions. And that's where the magic lies. If students are able to answer questions and ask questions that actually they care about, that's the difference. So what does our program actually look like? Well, over the course of two months, students come in for weekly sessions where they actually go through the scientific process in teams. They start with knowledge consumption. They learn as much as they can about the question that they're interested in. Then they learn some techniques, skills that will drive at the heart of their question and help them generate answers. We focus on data and visualization for this. After that, they do something that they never had the chance to do in school, and that's apply the knowledge and the skills that they learned through our program to their own questions. Instead of accepting the answers of others, they learn how to generate new solutions. And though a lot of our students come up with really interesting and really exciting solutions to their problems, we don't think that that's the main part of the story. What's most important is that they were able to go through the scientific process as a whole. And in doing so, they actually learn more about how to impact their communities. Following our program, students tell us that they're more courageous and they're more able to recognize problems in their community and solve them. And even though they're doing at times dry and somewhat boring activities like learning how statistics work or how to read a paper, they engage with it because they know that they're learning it to solve a problem that they care about. Now, this is to say that students are, ch are change makers. They have the ability to make a difference. And so when we incorporate knowledge generation into our educational models, we encourage students to be more active, engaged, and interested participants in their own learning. And through the program, students spend no more than 20 hours in the classroom. It's run entirely by volunteers. It costs no more than a regular classroom. It's not done in a lab and absolutely does not involve experts. The, re the truth is that at the center of the program, what will herald a new generation, a new paradigm of scientific literacy is the trust and the belief that students can be curious and can follow through. Now, we think that there's a real thirst for a program like this. We work with hundreds of students every year, and then they present their knowledge and the stuff that they've discovered to members of their own community who are very excited to hear about it. And now, we're not saying that traditional education is all bad. Things like exams are important. Things like guided experiments do have some value. But if we want our students to be the leaders of tomorrow, if we want them to be truly scientifically literate, then we're doing them a disservice because we don't let them apply the knowledge and the skills that they have to the problems of today. Now, in spite of the benefit that students might derive from a program like this, education systems are slow to change. But of course, over time they will. Education systems need to reinvigorate themselves and reimagine what it means to be scientifically literate. And while it's important that educational systems do change, we have an ask for you too. For the youth and the adults in the audience, we challenge you to apply scientific process to your own life. But what does that actually mean? 
What does it mean to apply the scientific process to your own life? Well, when navigating a world that's increasingly filled with misinformation and a world that's increasingly complex, and when making decisions about what to believe and what to do, trust yourself to find something new that someone else hasn't. But even more, be comfortable asking questions, getting information, evaluating the information, experimenting on your own to be able to generate knowledge of your own. At the end of the day, reimagining scientific literacy and the new generation of scientific literacy has nothing to do with science at all. It absolutely has nothing to do with the classroom. The new paradigm of scientific literacy is actually for all of us. Thank you.